Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna talk about the new Azure Files performance improvements, especially when we think about metadata operations, the opening and closing of files using handles. Now, some workloads, if I think about SQL database, virtual machines, they operate continuously on a very small number of files. This means what's really important to them is just data IOs. But those types of very long running, few number of interactions are actually pretty rare. Most workloads actually work with lots of files. Now in a traditional environment, if I think about, well, I have my client and it's using a file based protocol. So SMB to actually talk to a file share that's hosted on a file server, well, you have the underlying storage. So this is my SMB server. But what actually happens is for all of the metadata for many of the other types of operations, it's actually passing through a very fast cache that's all stored in memory. So when I think about, hey, I'm creating a file, I'm opening a file, I'm closing a file, I'm deleting a file, all those types of operations, when I'm interacting as the client through my Windows SMB file server, a lot of those metadata operations are just in the cache. So it also includes things like checking folder contents, checking for the existence of a file. It's super fast. I get this very, very high performance. Now, if we consider Azure files, so now we're in the cloud and I have my Azure files share, Remember that when we talk about Azure storage, it is a distributed system. There are numerous layers that make up, for example, the storage service. So as the client, sure, I'm talking to this SMB file share, but it's actually manifested over these multiple tiers of service. And between, each of these tiers, it is distributed. So fundamentally, you get a certain amount of latency on top of, hey, just the regular network latency you would get anywhere. So if I'm trying to compare the operations that I'm performing to an all-in-one file server, well, that metadata performance is going to suffer because it's distributed. Yes, there's a certain gap between the layers, but also you don't have this very fast memory-based cache until now we do. So what has been introduced is this idea of a metadata cache. So now those operations that are going through, we've added in this memory to the stack, which is gonna give you huge performance improvements. So when I think of, for example, a file create operation, now we have that metadata cache, it's gonna be 30% faster. When I am performing other types of just file operations, hey, that's gonna be faster. So if I am opening, closing, um, deleting, deletes 25% faster, file closes 45% faster. You get three times the metadata IOPS. And what that means in the real world, so if opening and closing a file, let's say was four milliseconds before, it's now sub two milliseconds. And that's a huge improvement. It's not the same speed as hey, an SSD operation that I'm performing locally, but two milliseconds gets you into the good enough for majority of scenarios where we need to use Azure files. And of course, realize if I am working with lots of files, 
When I reduce the metadata bottlenecks, it will now help improve the overall data IOPS, the data throughput. Now, as we talk about this metadata cache today, it's for Azure Files SSD, the premium SMB protocol, but standard and NFS are on the roadmap. And what's important to realize here is there is no downside to using the feature. It's gonna get rolled out to everyone. There's not gonna be any pricing changes, but it's following safe deployment practices. So yes, it's gonna to go to everyone over the next few months, but they follow that, hey, safe deployment practices, making sure it's not causing anything negative. If you need this urgently, you can kind of jump to the front of the queue. What you can do is register for the metadata caching feature, and it gives you the instructions and the documentation. I'll link to it in the description, but this will let you jump that line and go and get this applied within a few hours to your storage account. Now, the next improvement, which is separate from the metadata cache, is around numbers of handles. So when I think about how many on a particular file, how many handles can I have? I think it's 2,000 today for a file. How many handles can I have to the root? It's 10,000 today, which is actually up itself from the previous limit of 2,000. And those handles are actually super important when I think about the scale. Now the root handle limit is, well, how many workloads can actually go and have that handle to the root open at the same time? Now, not every type of workload requires a handle on the root, which means you could handle way, way higher. Some workloads will just take a handle on the particular file or folder they're using. But if you did have a workload, that required a handle on the root, well, you'd be limited to 10,000 concurrent connections of that workload on that particular Azure file share. So I may have to scale out the number of file servers based on supporting the number of handles I need instead of actually using a file share up to its actual capacity. And that becomes challenging because if I'm having to add more file shares just because of the number of handle connections, well, that's operational burden. I have to get the content copied to multiple file shares. Is there then a challenge with synchronization and updating them? Think of a login script. Now we're thinking about well, the limit per file, 2,000. Well, that would mean I could only have 2,000 people logging in at the same time because that file limit handle would apply. So if I had 100,000 people, I would need to go and create 50 shares and then replicate the file across them just to handle that concurrent number of logins. So what's happening is, the handles are now also gonna be stored in memory. That allows the number of handles to scale. Now the exact numbers are still being worked out. This is in preview, but imagine it was now 30,000 at the root. Well, that would let you exhaust the capacity of the storage account for things like VDI profiles. And the handles per file will align to the same as the number per root. So what's happening here is the number of handles both at the root and the file will be the same number and it is being increased. Check the documentation. So once this goes GA, check the doc to see what these numbers actually become. And also remember even post GA, limits tend to go up and up as they do more work and test more things. But this number of handles is increasing at both the root level and on a per file level. But there are other things happening as well. So if I think about this interaction, the metadata cache is about working on files. But another feature is directory leases. And what directory leases is gonna to apply to are interactions where I'm using the query directory API. So what I now have is this idea of a directory lease. Now what's gonna be different here, and actually take a step back, Linux. Linux machines, when I mount an NFS mount, they have an option called AC time O. It's typically set to 30 seconds, and it enables on the client side for it to cache information about the directory. So for 30 seconds, 
it will cache the information about directory. And so for that 30 seconds, it doesn't have to keep going back and forward. It will use that cache that is configured. What directory leases let me do is on the server side. So it's not on the client, on the server side, but on a per client basis. So this directory lease, this cache that it's going to do, it is going to have a directory metadata cache. So in a similar way as before on the client side, it would have that cache to store information related to the query directory API. Now on the server side, it's going to maintain that cache. So what that will let me now do is, hey, think of file listings. Anything related to the client's context of the directory, it can now serve it via this in-cache memory. So it's going to reduce the server round trips. It's going to improve the performance when I have those high concurrency workloads. And instead of it just being for 30 seconds, the, this cache is going to be kept indefinitely. It will get invalidated when changes occur in the directory. Now there's different types of lease, like a read lease would be broken on a metadata change, a write lease would be broken on conflicting opens, a handle lease would be broken due to sharing violations, etc. But think of this as working as another layer. And this can actually re result in a 97% reduction in directory enumeration time. If it's a large directory, so think 100,000 files. FS logic profiles. If I'm a Windows client and I'm working with a large FX logic profile, this is going to be a huge performance gain. So think of this working together. Hey, the metadata cache is about those create, delete, open, closes on sort of the contents. The query directory API in this new directory release, well, that's going to improve the performance of things like the directory listing. So together, I get a huge benefit. And there's one more change. Something else we see on clients and it's been a Windows client talking to SMB, is multi-channel. It lets me establish multiple channels to the file share, and then I get the combined performance of them. So now what's available is that same ability, but now for Linux as well, I have multi-channel. And today it's four max. So I can combine up to four channels to a single connection. So it's going to multiply that network bandwidth. So I get the combined IOPS, the throughput for that connection. So up from 20,000 IOPS to 80,000 IOPS per client. Now, the client has to be capable of 80,000 IOPS. You would go and check the capabilities of your client. But that's now a possible capability for not just my Win Windows machines, but my Linux machines as well. And it does require a premium SSD file share today to be able to leverage that multi-channel. Don't forget, I mean, there's still network latency, so the distance between the client and the Azure file share. So if they're in regions halfway across the world, that's obviously going to impact the performance. So wherever possible, you try and get the client as close to the file share as possible. That's just regular network latency and applying those best practices. But the great news, honestly, about all of these things is you don't really have to do anything. This is just going to get rolled out to all of the different um, instances around there. As we talked about, you can go to the docs and it gives you the links on how you can actually go and opt in, which is really just moving you to the front of the queue. You're going to get it anyway, but it will put you to the front of the queue. Um, check the documents for the updated limits because I think they will continue to change. But that was it. Uh, a whole bunch of performance improvements when you're using Azure Files, both interacting with the files with the metadata and interacting with the directory for queries about the listings. Hey, I'm going to increase the number of handles I can have. And if I'm Linux, hey, I can take advantage of multi-channel. Hope that was useful. Until next video, take care.